Hi, I'm Roxy. Today I want to quickly showcase a free online tool for artists called Magma Studio. Uh, I'll show you what its unique selling point is and how to get it working properly. The crab you see taking shape in the background is a sped up recording of me testing out Magma Studio. So you can immediately see Magma Studio is a painting application, but it's a bit more than that. I can tell you straight away that whether you're using Corel Painter, Clip Studio Paint, Paintstorm Studio, Photoshop, Critter, Paint or Sci, or any of those programs, Magma Studio is not going to replace that program because in comparison, the brush engine and painting functionality is quite primitive compared to uh, any of the aforementioned programs. But you might want to add it to your tool set anyway because it has a unique function that none of those programs have. And that unique function is that several artists can work on the same canvas at once. If you're a gamer like me, the best way to describe it is it's like multiplayer collab, but for art. I'll show you that part of the program in a bit, but first let's talk about cost. It's free, though it does have a pro version. So just to show you the comparison, uh, the Spark, which is the free version, is free. <laughs> and uh, you get unlimited personal files, so you can create as many artworks as you like, 100 megabytes storage, the basic tools, uh, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, and your inactive files are archived after 30 days. Uh, whereas the monthly rental option, you get um, some of the more novelty brushes and painterly looking brushes. Um, and uh, you can paint on higher resolution canvas. You get five gig storage. Your files last forever. You don't have to keep going in there to uh, activate them. Uh, larger live sessions. Um, doesn't actually say what the limitation is on the free side um, so that's a bit ambiguous but um, also has password protection you can sync with PSD files and you can have unlimited voice calls so if I just jump in here to this test painting you can see there's a couple of brushes here um, these are all so basic round uh, hard and soft brushes and when you see the little icon the red icon um, these are the the ones that you get on the monthly option so it's kind of more painterly and then you get these novelty brushes that you're probably not going to use often so it's not really bad i mean you can create uh, something decent with round brushes in terms of installation there isn't any it, it doesn't require installation because everything you can see and do happens online via your web browser i can't remember i think you do have to create an account uh, it's been a little while and um, it's because the canvas is online instead of on your computer that your friends or students, if you want to use it educationally, can join in and paint with you. Now, depending on what device and browser you're using, you may need to tweak it a little so that you can get the full experience. My first experience of the program was on my iPad using an Apple Pencil via Brave Browser and it worked perfectly without needing to fiddle with anything. It's nice when stuff just works. Uh, later on, when I fired it up on my PC, I discovered that there was no pressure sensitivity. I use Brave Browser on my PC as well. Uh, of course, I'm not using an Apple Pencil. Instead, I'm using a Huion, which uh, should have an even greater range of pressure sensitivity. And yet, as you can see, let me pick this one. Okay, so this is your, your standard inking brush. And um, the way you you've control the brushes is you tick. Um, this will link your pressure to the size of the brush and this density is basically the the opacity. Now if I if I paint you can see it's it's just basically like MS paint. There's no pressure sensitivity whatsoever. But I did have it on my iPad so I knew something was wrong. So I did a little bit of searching and uh, it recommended two things both of which I did. The first thing is to add a browser extension, which um, I don't even have it on anymore, but it, it, did, it did nothing. It didn't work. It was, uh, what was it called? I think it was called Stylus Pressure. 
Um, but what, what did actually work was turning on Windows Ink. Now, typically, I turn off Windows Ink because it interferes with pressure and things in other programs. Um, so for this purpose, basically, what I do is I go into my Huion uh, driver and I select Enable Windows Ink. Um, I'm assuming that most tablet software will have that toggle. If not, you know, just... Uh, Search for something like how do I turn on Windows Ink. You actually may have it turned on by default. Um, so you might not even have this problem. But a lot of artists, we turn it off because it, it just interferes. So now that I have Windows Ink enabled, now you can see I, I pressed really soft there and it was thin press a bit harder and uh, it gets a bit fatter. Let me just zoom in here. See that? Way better. So if you use this, just remember to toggle on Windows Ink and remember to switch it off afterwards so that it doesn't mess with your other programs. The other problem I noticed immediately uh, in the browser that I didn't have with um, my iPad was lag. The the brush lag was just unreal. Um, but I did figure out how to fix that. If you go to Edit, Application Settings, take on this Disable Graphics Acceleration. That helps a lot to uh, stop that, that brush lag. Um, I did find that uh, when I was in a group session with a whole bunch of people, there was still quite a heavy lag but even in single player for lack of a better word I was having lag with this ticked off so uh, try try to take that on and see if that helps your lag if you're having that issue oh while we're while we're here let's just have a look at the key bindings so let's see shortcuts um, so you can uh, set certain tools uh, to certain things like if I head on over to tools you'll see brushes set to B um, I would have liked to have set eyedropper to alt but um, it doesn't allow me to do that or I haven't figured out how to do that like if it allows me to press alt and a key but not just alt uh, sorry that was control but uh, let's say I press Alt I, it doesn't mind, but I can't, it won't just allow me to just press Alt. It it uh, wants me to press a key on the keyboard, so I can't set it to just Alt. Real pity because um, that is kind of the standard key for eye dropping. So I hope that they uh, they fix that. But otherwise, it's nice that you can actually key bind. So you've got on the side of here, you've got your paintbrush, uh, pencil, pixel pencil. I think that's just like a, a one pixel. Um, line and uh, the eyedropper of course you can just use press i on your keyboard you've got your selections uh, the move tool uh, you can pan around the canvas with the hand or you can um, even if you're on another tool if you if you press spacebar and hold that down you can pan it around you've got a full um, i don't know if i mentioned a razor a couple of shapes so it's very basic but you know it does the trick so with regards to multiplayer functionality, let's call it, what you're seeing uh, in the background now is a Halloween draw jam I was invited to by Sense Labs. Um, at this point in the video, there were nine of us doodling on the same canvas. And you can see how above each cursor, um, there's the person's name floating there. I guess that's to help you not get confused with which cursor is yours. That's me in the bottom right. Now, the visual you're watching is from the point of view of one of the people uh, from Sense Labs, the host. During the jam, I was I was seeing something different. I was zoomed into the bottom right corner of the canvas. Um, so, I don't have footage from my side, but if I show you the finished canvas, I was basically like working it at this kind of zoom level. This is my uh, Nosferatu and Blood Vial. So... Everybody else was basically zoomed into their portion of the canvas or, you know, zoomed out like this. So each person can control their own view, which is great.
The other thing, if I turn on the audio for this clip for a the moment, corner, you can see so drawing by Roxanne. So what you're hearing is the organizers of Sense Labs talking. Right Let me just turn them down a bit. So you'll notice that if they had their webcams on, um, that would also pop up in the right hand corner. And for those that weren't on voice, there was also a, a text chat window that we could use to communicate. So in that way, it can actually be quite a fun social with friends um, that are on other sides of the world. Obviously, with more people, the more hectic it becomes. But fortunately, there are layers. This is how you create layers. This little button here, add layer, or you can press shift in for a new layer. So you'd added a layer and you can also uh, rearrange them. And the nice thing is that um, nobody can draw on a layer that you create and you can't draw on a layer that somebody else creates. That way you're not accidentally going to deface each other's drawings. So my overall impression is that, as I said, uh, it's not going to replace your art software. But if you enjoy drawing with friends, you can have a draw jam session uh, like this. Um, and I think it could be really useful for a virtual teacher-student relationship. For example, you could have a virtual class where the teacher does a demo and the students all try to replicate um, what the teacher is doing and the teacher can give live feedback on what they're seeing. So, very cool concept and it's free, so the price is right. And I guess that's it, so thanks for watching. Much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one, God bless.